the real news. I'm Aaron Maté. The annual American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC Summit, has wrapped up in Washington, D.C. And one of its most controversial moments came when Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer outlined what he called the real reason for an absence of Middle East peace. Palestinians, he said, don't believe in the Jewish Bible. Let me tell you why, let me tell you why, my view, why we don't have peace. Because the fact of the matter is that too many Palestinians and too many Arabs do not want any Jewish state in the Middle East. The view of Palestinians is simple. Well, the Europeans treated the Jews badly, culminating in the Holocaust, and they gave them our land as compensation. Of course, we say it's our land. The Torah says it. But they don't believe in the Torah. So that's the reason there is not peace. Schumer's comments highlighted perhaps a better explanation for why there is no Middle East peace. Influential liberals like him hold extremist views like that. And one major factor is the lobby group that he was addressing. AIPAC has played a key role in lobbying members of Congress to support Israeli government policies. Well, now there is a major effort underway to prevent an expose of the Israel lobby's U.S. operations. Al Jazeera has made a documentary film that sent undercover journalists into pro-Israeli government groups in the U.S., and that has set the Israel lobby into a panic. The Israeli government is seeking to pressure Qatar, which funds Al Jazeera, to suppress the documentary. Well, a new report reveals at least one revelation the lobby wants to bury. According to the Electronic Intifada, the documentary exposes the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, a leading neoconservative think tank, as an agent of sorts of the Israeli government. I'm joined now by the reporter who broke this story for the Electronic Intifada. Asa Winston Lee is an independent journalist and the Electronic Intifada's associate editor. Welcome, Asa. Great to be with you, Aaron. Thanks for joining us. Talk about what you found out about this Israel lobby documentary uh, that the Israel lobby and the Israeli government want to prevent Al Jazeera from airing. Well, we've known for a little while now that the Al Jazeera's investigations unit uh, had uh, put running undercover journalists inside the U.S.-Israel lobby. Um, the head of the investigations unit, Clinton Swisher, in October came out on Al Jazeera Arabic and stated that, it, it, that uh, they'd done as much. Um, and this came on the heels of a similar investigation that they'd run in the UK being vindicated entirely by the UK's broadcasting regulator. Um, and we don't know very much about what's actually in the documentary, but we know we must we know that it must be explosive for the Israel lobby to be putting as much effort as they are into quash it. It seems that the identity of the undercover journalist has become known, or at least his existence and existence of the film became known. There's been reports in the Israeli press, for example, in Haaretz and in some uh, American uh, Jewish newspapers' websites that with connections to the Israel lobby, saying that Israel lobby sources told them about um, this person and that he'd been exposed. Um, so there's there's been a lot of um, speculation in various newspapers, but in October it was confirmed by Al Jazeera's um, head of the investigations unit that they, they've done a documentary. And that since then there's been a wave of um, pro Israel lobbyists who's been going to Qatar and been putting pressure on, on the government, on the, the ruling uh, royal family, um, to not air this. I mean, we they're not saying they've done this, but we can infer that's a big part of what they've been doing. Um, and, and we know from our source uh, that I wrote about in my article that it's, the film contains footage of the vice president of Foundation for the Defense of, for Defense of Democracies, Jonathan Shanza, 
um, talking very candidly about the Israel lobby and talk, and how they use anti-Semitism as, in his words, a smear against Palestine activists in the U.S. Right. So before we get into that further, let me go to a clip of that initial Al Jazeera documentary uh, that you mentioned. This U.S documentary that has not come out yet is a sequel to a uh, documentary that was made in Britain by Al Jazeera that revealed that uh, Israeli officials there are trying to influence the British government, uh, including by getting staffers who are deemed to be insufficiently supportive of Israel to be demoted or fired. And this is one clip of that where uh, Al Jazeera goes undercover and films an Israeli official trying to uh, pressure a British official into firing someone who Israel does not like. Can I give you some happy that you suggest that you would take down? <laughs> well, you know, if you look hard enough, I'm sure that there is something that we're trying to hide. Yeah, I have some of these. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. No, she knows we can't be the one to ask the question. Yeah, it's good to remind me. <laughs> So that's a clip from the Al Jazeera documentary that was made on the Israel uh, uh, government and its activities inside uh, Britain. Asa, you mentioned that the, uh, that they lobbed, that the documentary was vindicated. What do you mean by that? Well, the, uh, the Israel lobby in this country, several people put in complaints uh, with the broadcasting regulator, Ofcom, and they alleged the various things to you know try and dismiss the credibility of the report. They alleged that it was anti-Semitic. They alleged uh, various things. Uh, Ofcom found uh, completely in Al Jazeera's favor. Like, it was vindicated on all counts. They hadn't misrepresented any facts. You know, Al Jazeera went through the ringer in actually providing, um, as I understand it, um, from reading the Ofcom report, um, unedited footage, you know, so they could uh, check that it had been not taken out of context. Um, and so all, all these attacks as that it was anti-Semitic were just a complete smear. Um, so it was vindicated. And it, it seems, I mean, my impression seemed that the Al Jazeera management may have been holding off to see uh, how this investigation, you know, came out in the end and that they received this vindication. And then perhaps the staff were expecting the, okay, now the, the sequel, the, the US on the US lobby can be released. You know, one irony that you note in your piece is that uh, the, in response to news of this documentary, now uh, APAC has gotten its allies in Congress to call for Al Jazeera to be registered as a foreign agent, modeled yeah. on, the, on the tactics that were used against uh, the Russian uh, state-funded TV network, RT. But interestingly, uh, as we were talking about, you were mentioning how the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, this neocon think tank, that they are now working uh, with the Israeli government, uh, and but they have not, of course, registered as a foreign agent. What exactly are they doing in the U.S. on behalf of Israel? Well, that it's um, directly cooperating with the Israeli government. So in the footage, According to our source, um, Israel's uh, the director general of the Israeli Ministry of Strategic Affairs claims in her words, "We have FDD, and we have so we have FDD working on things for us, including surveillance of activist groups." So I Israel has these um, agents, you could say, in the United States, which is working for it, and one of them does seem to be the, the FDD, and that and it's not registered as a foreign agent. Um, and so it really calls into question whether FDD is violating American law and whether Israeli uh, organizations, pro-Israeli organizations, possibly the Israeli embassy is violating American law. Hmm. Finally, Asa, you talk about in your piece, uh, according to your source, who's familiar with the contents of this documentary, that uh, the Israel lobby is working with the Israeli government to uh, monitor activists and, and gather data uh, about uh, Palestinian solidarity activism in the U.S. And one uh, lobby official laments the fact that anti-Semitism, the calling critics of Israel anti-Semites, is no longer an effective smear. 
Yeah, that's right. Our sources have actually seen the film, um, and you know, we're as always, you know, we're, we're we're satisfied about the reliability of our information. Um, and yeah, this is Jonathan Shanza of of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, who you know, reportedly, according to our source, says in the film that anti-Semitism as a smear is no longer what it used to be. So he's um, admitting, number one, that um, the Israel lobby uh, very cynically misuses the very real concerns about anti-Semitism that there is in the world to uh, falsely allege that its political enemies are only motivated by hatred for Jews rather than concern for Palestinians. So he's admitting it's a smear, but he's also admitting that it's not as effective as it used to be, which is interesting. So the Israel lobby very much does like to portray itself as powerful, you know, as, as hegemonic. And it certainly is influential. It has, you know, a lot of money behind it and a lot of kind of uh, inertia, uh, especially in America. But um, I think we see historical trends where his power is beginning to slip and we see you know in these very it, reportedly what is this very candid moment in the documentary um where that is admitted in private and you know i i would not be surprised to see when the you know hopefully when the film does come out um far more of, of that kind of candor in private right and as you say in your piece uh whether or not the israel lobby succeeds in burying this Al Jazeera documentary will be a, a very uh, strong test of the type of influence that the Al Jazeera documentary team set out to expose in the first place. We will leave it there, though. Asa Winstantly, Associate Editor of the Electronic Intifada, thank you. Thanks. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.